Good morning, girls. You ready to come across? Easy, 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 easy. Good girl, Jane. Good girl, Grace. Good girl, baby. Good girl. Good morning, Miss Grace. How are you, baby? Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the farm. It's going to be a beautiful day out here today. I think we're looking at about 85 degrees. We got rain coming in uh, tomorrow evening through Saturday morning, but it's not going to be a washout like it has been the last few weekends. So that's going to be nice. The girls turned two years old last month, and I did not give you a two-year-old update, so I thought I would do that and let you know how they're doing. So the girls are doing great. If you don't remember, this is Jean with the star, and then this is Grace with no star. Grace is about 16'2 tall, and Jean is about 16'3 tall, and they're both over 1,400 pounds-ish. I don't know exactly, but they're somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, my measuring tape that I use to tape their weight, I've misplaced it, and I don't know exactly where it is. But uh, the last time I had taped them, they were real close to that, so I know they're over that now. So they just turned two, and they are they're going to be big girls. I was talking to Jared, the guy that bred them, and we're thinking that they're going to be about 17.3. Jewel is 17.1, and these girls are going to be bigger than 17.1 because they've still got... You know, they're, they're still babies, and uh, they haven't even filled out yet. They, they're getting their height, and they're, now they're starting to get their, their thickness. But when you look at them in the pasture next to Jewel, they're almost as tall as she is. And it's uh, pretty amazing when they're all feeding side by side by side. They're, they're very, very similar. So we're going to be getting them going here very soon, working with Jewel on the cart. Uh, Joy is behind me in the stall. You probably can't see her because of the girls, but she has been sold. She was sold about four weeks ago. The guy just wasn't ready for her yet, so I just I told him that I would keep her until he was ready for her. But she is paid in full, and we're just waiting on him to give us the word to uh, transport her over there. She's only going about 40 minutes away, so that's really nice. I'll be able to go and see her and make sure she's okay. A lot of people said, well, you know, why don't you just keep Jewel? Well, Jewel is coming nine, and she's in the prime of her life, and she needs a job. She's not a pasture pet, and she wants a job. She paces the fence. She wants to get on the trailer whenever I've got the trailer out. She wants to go somewhere and do something, and... While I'm emotionally attached to her, I am more of the posture that she needs to go somewhere where she is going to be used. She is not being used, and nobody rides with me, and she's a saddle mule. She's not a driving mule, and I want to focus on the driving. So she's going to go to this guy, and he'll ride her, and his daughter will ride her, very much like Chief up in West Virginia. And I'll be able to focus on these clowns. And we can focus on getting them driving with Jewel. 
my buddy affectionately calls these girls Dennis and Menace just because they get into everything. So I have to reprimand him verbally every time he calls them that and let him know that their names are Gene and Grace. They're youngsters, so they're going to get into stuff. So, But they are absolutely adorable, and they're beautiful. So that's their two-year update. But probably the most exciting thing that's happened here on the farm in a while is we finally have electricity. If you remember about six months ago, I trenched electric from the barn over to the shop. And I did that because I was trenching water and I didn't want to trench twice. So I trenched it in preparation for the electric. And it's just taken me a while. You know, I'm building this farm by myself. I'm out here 99% of the time by myself. I could not do the electric. The electric had to be done by a licensed electrician because it had to be done to code. It had to be inspected. It had to be permitted. And I just was not capable of doing that. So I had to wait for their schedule. I had two electricians out here at different times. I had one electrician doing the high work, one electrician doing the low work. And then I was their helper just grabbing stuff. Um, and going to the store and picking stuff up. And it was a big undertaking, but it is finally done. So I've got electric in the barn. I've got lights. I've got fans. I've got outlets for trimmers, or if the vet was out here and needed to plug in something, piece of equipment or something, or, or any other person was out here, the farrier needed something to plug in. And then we've got it over at the shop. But the other morning, I came out here, in the middle of it was dark the sun hadn't come up yet and it's typically what i'm used to so let me show you what happened on that day that i came out so here we are at sunrise you can see the barn is dark and this is typically what i deal with the only light i've got is my street light so when you get in the barn you know you got to have your headlight or your flashlight but now that I got power I can turn on the lights so let's see for the first time what it looks like look at that that is something right there very nice very nice and then the fans are up on top of each one of the stalls. And turn those on. So the electrical meter is now on the outside of the barn. Before it was on a temporary pole, if you'll remember, right over there by that telephone pole. Took that out, tied it into that pole, brought it over, tied it in overhead, and then. And then from here, it goes down, it's trenched all the way around, and goes all the way over there to the shop. So the water and the electric come up right here. all the way from over there 800 feet away it's a pretty long trench but it's a lot better than having the power above ground and having those ugly wires comes up right here into the breaker box i now have my 60 gallon air compressor 220 online got a 110 there 110 there. I've got a uh, 220 right here for my welder. And I've got another 110 over here. And then on the other side of the shop, got a 110 right here. And a 110 right here. And probably the biggest game changer of everything is I finally have a refrigerator. I picked this up from a local girl here 
She's only about 10 minutes away. And this thing is going to be a life changer. I now can have my orange Gatorades, my water, my Cokes, my teas. I've got sandwich stuff. I've got paper plates and cutlery down here. I've got salt and pepper, ketchup, mayo. Now when I'm hot, I can come in here, get a cold drink. When I'm feeling weak, I can make a sandwich. I can get a, you know, I'm going to have some candy in there to get a sugar boost if I need one. I don't have to worry about that stuff melting. It's just going to be having electric out here is just, it's a huge, huge game changer. I've stepped it up about 50 years, 60 years by having electric out here now. So I'm going to be able to do so much more. So what I'm going to do now is this wall right here, I'm going to insulate it in pink board foam. And then I'm going to put shelving all the way down this wall. And I'm going to get all of this crap off the floor, on the shelves, and organized so that I can actually work in here. It's just been a catch-all right now because I haven't been able to do anything in here. But now that we have electric, right when you walk in the door, you've got a light switch. Nice. There is not a dark spot in here. This is great. So you remember I told you that there were some game changers that were going to be coming up and I was going to be sharing them with you as the weeks went on. Well, the first one was the Kawasaki Mule last week. Second was electric this week. And the third isn't here yet. I'm hoping it'll be here in about two weeks, but it's for the girls. And it's going in the center paddock out here, paddock two. And it's going to be huge for them and they're going to thoroughly enjoy it. It's going to benefit me as well. But I'll explain more about that game changer when it happens. So we are getting into now where the majority of the construction is completed out here at the farm. Now I can start focusing on my building, getting the insulation done, getting those shelving up, getting that organized. But now I'm going to start calling for dump trucks to come in and start graveling that shop area. I need to get the pole barn graveled, the lean-to graveled, and all around the building graveled. And I want to gravel down, re-gravel the entire driveway from the street all the way out. So that's going to take several months because that's going to be probably six or eight dump trucks. And they're, they're fairly pricey. So that's going to be a kind of a two dump truck a month kind of deal. And it'll just happen over the course of two or three months. But we are rapidly getting to the point where we can actually enjoy the farm and not have to be in a construction mode all the time. We'll just be in a maintenance mode where we're just cutting grass and spending time driving the horses. So we are, we are finally getting there. It's been a long three years and it's been uh, a, lot of, a lot of hard work, but there is a lot of self gratification going on out here. I am thoroughly pleased. I just love to look around at the place and see what all I've accomplished in, in the three years that I've owned the property. So, more to come. Grace. Grace, leave that camera alone. Grace. Grace. Thank you. Children. Anyway, I appreciate you watching this week. Remember who you are. Be kind to those around you. Stand up for what you believe in.